So now, this product, phosphoglycerate, will enter the second phase of the Kelvin cycle, which is the reduction phase. Reduction has nothing to do with some something get trimmed off, something get pruned off. We are talking about biochemistry, meaning that it receives hydrogen. As simple as that. Reduction. Reduction in chemistry means some, somebody is receiving hydrogen. Right. So what happens here? So I have highlighted here. These three phosphoglycerate will react with one molecule of ATP to become one three vis phosphoglycerate. And this process is what we call as phosphorylation. So the phosphorylation of three phosphoglycerate. This phosphoglycerate, sometimes people um, put it PGA. Phosphoglycerate. It depends on the word. That's why I'm not so big on the uh, this abbreviation. You read 10 books, 10 books will have different acronym abbreviation for it. So for now, we use the full name. Right. ATP is added to phosphoglycerate. Now, Carbon number one also has phosphate. One, three. Carbon one got phosphate. Carbon th uh, three got phosphate. But it is still glycerate. It is still glycerate. It's not changing to anything else. Okay? Right. This one, three, this phosphoglycerate will then receive hydrogen. Will get reduced by the action of NADPH. Now it becomes a new molecule. You see, it adds the name here. Glycerol dehyde, three phosphate. Yeah. In this process, you can see that there is no more one three. Carbon number one get dephosphorylated actually. That's why at the end of here, you get NADP plus plus inorganic phosphate. A phosphate group is released from the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Why, why it has to be re, uh, removed? If it is not removed, how can it receive extra hydrogen? Right. That get removed. Now, it becomes the new G3P. Some books say it. It's good to know a bit, G. This thing cannot, cannot. Glyceraldehyde, three phosphate. And guess what? This is the sugar precursor. Two times glyceraldehyde, three phosphate, you will get a glucose. But there's no glucose happening right now. No. Remember, who, who decides to get glucose, sucrose, or starch? The power will decide. Depending on the energy demand. Depending on whether it has babies or not. Maybe some plants, for example, like the perennial plants, um, it will decide during the fruit season to shuttle all the sugar to the fruits. But during non-fruit non season, it only has what? Less, less, le less organ, right? only leaves, no fruit, right? So it will decide much of it go to starch only some leaf as um, sucrose to the leaf because leaf is not really a sink sugar. It is a sink organ. But if you compare leaf to fruit, which is the strong, stronger sink organ? Fruit, right? Is that? But some leaves are sweet, right? What are example? Sweet leaf. Cannot think of one. Lalang. Choco manis. You know that plant? Hello. Poco, poco, poco asian same. Sauropus androgynous. Sauropus androgynous. <coughs> Choco manis. That little is sweet. Uh, okay. Right. <coughs> so, up to this point, you can see that ADP and ATP has been used, right? 
right? So whatever that I've said just now, that is the summary of it to get this. Remember, at this point, the Kelvin cycle not only fix one carbon with one RUBP at a time. No, that's not what's happening, okay? Actually, in, in reality is in order, because one need to exit. If you start as one carbon and R, one RUBP, when it reaches at this point, everything needs to exit. Who's going to continue? Right, you cannot continue. So the reality is actually, um, three times RUBP react with three times CO2. So the total carbon here is 18. 18. When it reaches here, it reaches in the form of six molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This is three carbon, right? If you times again, the carbon is still 18. 18 carbon. Remember, one need to exit here. So when it exit, now it becomes what? Whose exit, who continue? Exit is one times G3P, which is three carbon. Whose continue? Regenerate. Five molecules of G3P, which is 15 carbon. Okay, this is how it works. And these five molecules of G3P, which you will, I think we will just stop up to this point, it will continue to become only three molecule of RUBP. It becomes this way. Oh, see, you start with three again. Can you see the magic here? It starts as three RUBP, react with three carbon. The total is 18 carbon. At the end of the reduction, it is left with six molecules of G3P with the total of 18 carbon, right? However, not all six molecules of G3P will exit and do sugar, do starch, do whatever. Only one precursor, hence the word precursor. That's why it's called C3 photosynthesis. This is why, because the first product, the first product is G3P three carbon, glyceraldehyde three phosphate. One carbon exit, so what about the balance? The balance is five units of G3P proceeds to regenerate. During regeneration, a shuffling is involved, like you are playing a Lego and cut. Reshuffling is involved. Originally, you start as five molecules, then it reshuffle, boom, you come with three molecules of RUBP. This is five carbon, right? What about three molecules of RUBP? How many carbon? Still one, 15. And you get exactly the same. You end with five carbon, you start with five carbon as well. Oh, sorry, um, 15 carbon, 15 carbon. This is 15 carbon. So that is the reason why this has to be in the form of a cycle. It has to be sustainable. In in any way, RUBP level, because plants do not have time to make new RUBP, it needs to find a way. It's like a riddle. How can we use this sugar without losing the sugar at the end? That's the riddle. So evolution, pa, 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 all, 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 all the magic happens, millions of years. They come up with this strategy. Very smart. Who tells the plant to do this? <laughs> That's a mighty good question, right? Who tells the plant to do this?